school biology students. Today we're going to be talking about cell parts or organelles. Let's get started. So in this we're going to be using a chart. If you don't have this chart from class, there's also a post link of it as a Word document on Blackboard. As we go through each of the slides, you'll see a column for organelle, a column for function, a column for keywords, and a column for animal and plant cell. I'll do my best to try to give you hints for a drawing. Just do your best on that. And then some of them are going to have an analogy. I'll tell you if it does. If it doesn't, you could just put a line through that box. All right, let's get started. Before we get started, just know all the analogies are going to be relating a cell to a factory. You don't need to write this down. Why are we doing that? Because cells have many parts like a factory, and they all work together to get a job done. Let's get started. Our friend, the nucleus that we're usually familiar with, a nucleus is the thing that contains the DNA or the genetic material. Our keyword is going to be control center. It's in both plants and animal cells, but we know it's not in prokaryotes or bacteria. If I were to draw this, I'd draw a circular cell and I'd draw a darker dot in the center and I'd point to that and say that's the nucleus. What is this going to be for our analogy it will be the control room that's because this is going to direct most of the functions in the cell which is like a factory all you need to do is write the word control room down do pause or go back if I'm going too fast the next one cell membrane we sometimes have this as a synonym plasma membrane this is the outermost part of the cell so I would draw the cell as a circle and I would part point to the outermost part. This is going to control what enters and exits, which is why we call it like a guard. It's on both plants and animal cells. Pause if you want more time to draw. We kind of think about it like a door, because guess what? If the door's locked, things can't get in, just like they couldn't get into the cell. If the door's open, it gets in. So this controls what enters and exits the door. Okay? Let's keep going. The next one, the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body. Notice that this looks like almost pieces of bread or pita bread even with these bubbles coming off. Those bubbles are the packages of the cell and usually they have proteins inside of it. Proteins are so important to the cell. They're one of our macromolecules. They're in charge of chemical reactions. Um, they're in charge of defense, movement, structure. All right, so this guy packages those proteins. We then have that keyword package here and it's in both plants and animal cells. So pause, draw it like pita bread, and then make sure the bubbles are coming off. What is this like in my factory? It is like the shipping yard. Sometimes we think about it like the post office or UPS. Our next one, the mighty mitochondria. Notice the mitochondria looks like a bean shape, okay? It has these M-shaped folds, M for mitochondria. Sometimes I think they look like the edges of lasagna, okay? I would make sure you have those folds on the inside of your drawing. What's its job? Well, it's all about cellular respiration, which we know is about turning sugar or food into usable energy, and we're going to learn more about that in this quarter. So cellular respiration is all about energy, so we're going to think about the mitochondria as energy area, or the powerhouse of the cell. All living things need usable energy. Energy is one of our characteristics of life, so it's in both plants and animal cells. Okay, what's our analogy? Our analogy is that since this is about energy, let's say that this is like the furnace or the electricity inside the factory because those things have to do with energy. Keep it going. Ribosomes. Be careful to call this ribosomes like rye bread and not ribosomes like your ribs. So say ribosomes. This is in charge of making the proteins that the Golgi will package. So these guys are really, really important, and they're all about proteins. These are actually not only in plants and animal cells, they're in all cells, even bacterial cells. They look like the dots of the cell or the freckles. So I would draw a circle or a cell, and you can draw these as the little freckles or dots. They kind of look like sesame seeds. So each of these little dots is a center for making proteins. So for our analogy, we think of these guys like the people on an assembly line who are in charge of making some sort of product. In this case, in our cell, the ribosomes are making protein. Okay, let's keep going. 
The next thing is the nucleolus. This one's a little confusing because it sounds like nucleus, so make sure you say it right. Nucleolus. The nucleolus actually in an image looks like it is part of the nucleus, which is good because this is the whole cell. This part is the nucleus. It looks like a tangle of string that's darker, almost like the pupil of an eyeball, and that's exactly right. It's a tangle of string. So what is that string really? That string is DNA because we know the DNA is inside the nucleus. Just the darker part that's more tangled is the nucleolus. And what is that part really in charge of? Well, it's in charge of making ribosomes, which we just learned make themselves some proteins. So what is the key word here? Ribosomes. We'll practice all these relationships in class. This is in both plants and animal cells. For our analogy, we think of this guy as the boss of the factory. Why? Because remember, our assembly line people were the ribosomes. Okay, so this guy, this man he's yelling at, this is probably a ribosome. And the boss is in charge of the ribosome, right? What was the ribosome in charge of? Making the protein, okay? We'll practice this a ton in class, so don't worry. Keep it going. What is a chloroplast? Most of us remember that from seventh grade, but just in case... Chloroplast is all in charge of photosynthesis. It uses the sun's energy to make food for the plant. That's why we call them producers or autotrophs. We remember from class that the pigment that's green inside the chloroplast is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll fills up the chloroplast. What does it look like? It looks like a bean shape, just like my mitochondria, but instead of the M folds, we have these pancake-like structures or almost like cookie structures that are stacked on top of each other. Now, how do I remember the pancake ones are for chloroplast? Well, chloroplast, photosynthesis, both start with P. That's why I like to call these pancakes, right? Because they're in plants. Um, our mitochondria had M folds for mitochondria. What is an analogy for this one? We're actually going to skip analogy for chloroplast, okay? Let's keep going. We're going to talk about the endoplasmic reticulum. Try saying it, endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the rough one which we call rough ER to make it easier. So this guy is a transportation highway, and specifically it's going to transport proteins. Well, how's it getting the proteins? Well, if we look really closely, what makes the rough ER so rough? Well, it's actually these freckles or dots. What were we calling the freckles or dots in the cell? The ribosomes. So I can remember rough for ribosomes. Think about this like a sesame bagel. If I were to put my hand on it, it would kind of feel like sandpaper and it would feel rough. So right there, those ribosomes will make some proteins. And this highway system, we can see it's connected. There's some connections or roads between the different folds here. Um, it'll send the, the proteins that are made by those ribosomes around the cell. So keyword transport or highway. This is in both plants or animal cells. Let's keep going. I'm going to do the analogy in a second. So there's another type of endoplasmic reticulum. This one's smooth. So if the rough one was rough because of ribosomes, do you think the smooth one can have ribosomes? No, it can't because that's what's making it smooth. So it's not likely to transport proteins because the ribosomes were making the proteins. So what does it transport? It transports lipids. I think of this as like a smooth baby's bottom and babies have a little bit of baby fat on them, you know. You can pinch and squeeze them. And we think lipids are fat, right? So this guy, the fat baby bottom one that's smooth, it is for lipids because it's not for proteins, okay? It's smooth because it doesn't have ribosomes on it. So here are key words. This is also in plants and animal cells. Just like the other ER, it's all about transport. So for both the smooth and the rough ER, we think of these as the conveyors or the highway. So we can write that for an analogy for both. Let's keep going. Lysosome. Lysosome sounds like the word Lysol. It is all about digestive enzymes that can break things down. This is like our recycling center. So if you wanted to reuse a piece of something in the cell, we're going to send it to these little circles. Okay, These circles have these weird digestive enzymes that break things apart like karate chop. Think about putting a big house of Legos and breaking the Legos into their individual pieces so new things could be made. All right, so I think a drawing is really hard for this one, so don't get stressed, but we do have an analogy. Our analogy is our recycling bin. I like to also remind you that this sounds like the word Lysol, which is a cleaning agent. So we think of this as a recycler or a cleaner for the cell. 
cytoskeleton has the word skeleton in it. Skeleton for humans is all about helping us stand upright without our skeleton. We'd be jelly on the floor. So this guy here, if we're drawing it, we draw a cell, and we draw these little red or blue fibers throughout. Those fibers give different cells different shapes. Some cells are circular, some cells are pointy. This cell is this shape because of its fibers that are protruding and making it different shapes. All right, so our key words are support or shape. This is in both plants and animal cells. If we were to think of this as an analogy, in a factory it would be like the beams or the bricks that hold the factory together to be whatever shape the factory is. Our next thing is the cytoplasm. This one we usually know from middle school, but if not, it is the jelly or gel-like substance that holds all the organelles in their place. All right, they're just kind of sitting in this jello-like stuff. Um, this is in both plants and animals. If I were to draw this, I would just put a circle and I would point to in between the nothingness. This one doesn't have a good analogy. Okay, it's okay. Um, maybe you could write the floor of the factory or the air in the factory, but really the analogy doesn't work so well for this one. Vacuole, okay, for us we're going to notice that there's plant and animal vacuoles, all right? The big important job of them is to store nutrients, waste, and water, all right? The key word would be then store. Do notice that they're different for plants and animals. Let's look at the plant one first. We draw a plant cell. But actually the important thing to draw is this big ginormous blue thing. This is holding water or nutrients. That's the vacuum. So do you think this is the large central one or the many tiny ones for the plant? I would definitely say the plant. Oops. The plant has a larger one. Sometimes it's not very central, but it is pretty large. Versus an animal has these white ones, and they're many, and they're tiny. Sometimes they're even more than just two. So our big difference is they both have them, but they're different types and shapes. So there's some differences. So what is our analogy? Our analogy is to think of this like a storage tank, which can hold food or water for the factory, maybe the waste of the factory. Storage tanks. Next we have cell wall. Cell wall is on a plant cell only. This is going to be even on the outer part beyond or outside even of the cell membrane. It is very firm, has a lot of structure. It gives the plant extra support that even animal cells do not have. Just remember it is beyond or outside the cell membrane. So you might want to draw a first line for your cell, point to that as the cell membrane, draw another line around that and make a note that that is the cell wall. And again, this is just in plants. There is no good analogy for our factory for this one. Our second to last one is our DNA, which comes in multiple forms called chromosomes or chromatin. Either form, we know DNA is our genetic material. For our eukaryotic cells, they're in the nucleus, right? So our keywords are genetic and um, DNA. You can draw the DNA any way you want. It doesn't matter to me. Um, we are not going to use an analogy for it. You could say maybe the person inside the control room. We're actually going to learn later the difference between these two types of DNA, but for now, we're good enough, okay? So draw it as you want to. Maybe you want to draw the little X or the double helix if you want, um, but no really good analogy. <gasps> and last but not least, we have our cilium and flagellum. Let's go through them step by step. Cilium are much smaller hair-like structures. Look at all these weird little hairs outside this guy. This guy's actually uh, more likely to be a protist. Um, and then flagella are really long, almost like tails, and they like really flap like whips. Think like Indiana Jones, really hidden a whip, all right? And both of them, they'll move, move, move like silly little structures, and they will cause the cells themselves to move. So what is the job really for both of these things is to cause these little unicellular creatures to move. So just know this is, can be in animals and plants, but we'll really talk about this when we learn more about protists. <gasps> and guess what? There's no analogy for this one. Draw it to your best of your ability, and you made it through one of our longest notes of the year. Can you believe it? Good thing we have that table to help us. <gasps> Pause and go back if you need to, but I am so proud of you. <gasps> Whew, take a deep breath. Those are our organelles. Let's practice them together in class.
See you guys later.